Have you ever opened a pack of hot dogs, bacon, or canned luncheon meat and wondered, what exactly makes these processed? We hear the term all the time, processed meat this, processed meat that, avoid processed meat, limit processed meat. But very few people actually understand what the label means. Is it just meat that isn't fresh? Is it meat with chemicals? Is it something made in a factory? Or is the definition more complicated than that? Today, we're stripping away the confusion, breaking down the science, the history, and the myths behind what exactly is processed meat. By the end of this video, you'll have a clear, no-nonsense understanding of what processed meat really is and why it matters. Let's get into it, right here on History of Simple Things. Processed meat has been around for thousands of years. We often think of it as a modern thing, something that came from industrial factories, machinery, and food labs. But the truth is, humans have been processing meat long before electricity or refrigerators even existed. Smoking, salting, curing, fermenting, drying, these ancient techniques allowed early humans to store meat for long periods, especially in times when fresh food was scarce. So even though processed meat has a scary ring to it today, it actually began as a survival tool. But of course, today's processed meats look very different from the smoked meats of ancient civilizations. That's where the confusion begins. So before we get into health concerns or ingredients, let's define what processed meat really is. Processed meat is any meat that has been changed from its original fresh state through methods like curing, salting, smoking, fermenting, or adding preservatives. If the meat has been altered specifically to enhance flavor or extend shelf life, it falls under the processed category. So what meats belong here? Bacon, ham, hot dogs, sausages, corned beef, luncheon meat, pepperoni, salami, tocino, longanisa, jerky, and canned meat products. But here's a key detail. Not all modifications count as processing. For example, cutting meat, not processed. Freezing meat, not processed. Grinding meat into fresh patties, not processed, as long as no preservatives or curing agents are added. So, a vacuum-sealed, frozen, fresh chicken breast is still just fresh chicken. But once you add curing agents, preservatives, or prepare the meat specifically to prolong its shelf life or create a new texture and flavor, then it enters the processed zone. Let's break down the most common techniques used to turn fresh meat into processed meat. Each method has its own purpose and history. Curing. The oldest method. Curing typically involves salts like sodium nitrate or nitrite. These chemicals prevent spoilage, stop the growth of harmful bacteria, and help maintain that pink or red color we associate with ham and hot dogs. In ancient times, people used natural salt and mineral deposits. Today, curing is more controlled and precise. Curing does three main things, preserves the meat, adds flavor, gives the meat its distinct color and texture. Without curing, foods like bacon and pepperoni simply wouldn't be the same. Smoking flavor plus preservation. Smoking is both a cooking method and a preservation technique. Over time, smoke dries the meat, adds a smoky aroma, and helps inhibit bacterial growth. Examples of smoked meats, smoked bacon, smoked sausages, smoked ham, beef jerky. Even today, smoking remains one of the most popular methods, not just for preservation, but because of the rich, deep flavors it creates. Salting, the original refrigeration. 
Salt draws out moisture from meat, creating an environment where bacteria struggle to survive. These why salted fish, salted pork, and dried meats have been staples in many cultures long before modern appliances. It's simple, but extremely effective. Fermenting Controlled Aging Fermented meats are created by letting certain beneficial bacteria break down the meat's proteins and sugars. It sounds strange, but the process enhances flavor, texture, and shelf stability. Examples include pepperoni, salami, certain types of sausages. Fermentation is what gives these meats their tangy, complex flavors. Adding preservatives and flavor enhancers. In modern food manufacturing, processed meats often contain sodium nitrite, sodium nitrate, phosphates, MSG, sugar, spices, binders, antioxidants. These ingredients aren't just added randomly, they serve specific purposes like preventing spoilage, keeping moisture, improving texture, and enhancing flavor. With refrigerators and freezers in almost every home, why do we still eat so much processed meat? Well, processed meats provide benefits that fresh meats alone don't offer. Convenience. They're ready to cook or ready to eat. Perfect for busy lifestyles. Longer shelf life. Many processed meats can sit in your fridge or pantry much longer than fresh meat. Flavor. Let's be honest. Bacon, pepperoni, and corned beef taste incredibly good, partly because of the curing, smoking, and seasoning. Affordability processed meats often use trimmings and parts that might otherwise be wasted, making them cheaper to produce. Cultural traditions. A lot of processed meats are tied to heritage and culture. Think of Spanish chorizo, Italian salami, Filipino tocino, or Chinese lap chiong. At the end of the day, processed meat is a product of human innovation, something that has traveled with us from ancient civilizations to modern supermarket shelves. And while it has its pros and cons, it has undeniably shaped our cuisines, cultures, and even our survival as a species. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.